today we're going to analyze a problem involving projectile motion. A projectile is any object uh, that is falling freely. Um, it doesn't have to be thrown horizontally or shot horizontally at all or some, at some angle. It simply has to fall freely. And so uh, in this case we have a baseball player but they're up on a tower. They throw a baseball at 20 meters per second but as we know that baseball is going to fall the entire time it's moving. Uh, this baseball starts off 45 meters from the ground and starts off um, at a horizontal velocity of 20 meters per second. And our mission is to find out how far from where it is thrown it lands, how far in the horizontal direction. So one approach here is to divide the X motion from the Y motion because in a, with a projectile the X motion is independent from the Y motion. And so my suggestion to you is you set up a table and that table has both the Y motion, and I'm going to put that first, separated from the X motion. And Y motion, because it's freely fall, the ball is freely falling, is accelerated motion. Whereas X motion, we're assuming no air resistance, is going to be a constant velocity motion. All right, so my suggestion to you is that you throw in everything into these two columns that you can think of. And so first, let's label this thing. Let's call it the distance in the y direction. You could call it the height, of course. I'm going to use a lot of subscripts here to, to label things as y and x. We have a velocity. That's a velocity in the x direction. Put in the x column. We know the acceleration due to gravity, but that's in the y direction. We're looking for this distance. This is an x distance. There are equations that we know. And since we have been given the height, I'm going to use a formula uh, for acceleration in the y direction. Distance is equal to 1 half a t squared. This is, again, the acceleration in the y direction. With constant motion, we can use an average velocity formula. Average velocity, in this case, in the x direction, is equal to the x velocity, which is the distance in the x direction divided by time. Again, this is just average velocity. is distance over time. But because the motion is constant, that we can substitute these. All right, so I think that's all we know. Um, and so now let's uh, start with the Y motion, and there's a reason to do that in this case, and this maybe just comes from experience, that since we know the height, we know uh, the acceleration due to gravity, we can solve for the time. That's It's already known, and the time is going to connect the Y motion to the X motion. That means that the time is the same in both the Y and the X direction. So if I were to solve this for time, I would have time is equal to 2 times the distance divided by that acceleration in the y direction um, and the square root of all of that. So if I take twice the distance in the y direction, which is 45 meters, and I divide it by 10 meters per second squared, the meters cancel. 90 divided by 10 is 9. The second squared comes up into the numerator. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of second squared is seconds. And now what we have found is we have found that it's going to, this ball is going to take 3 seconds to hit the ground. But the time is the same. The time of travel is the same for both the x and the y motion. So that's connecting us. Now we, we can see that it was this worked out because we were able to solve for this time from this category, the y motion category. And now, knowing the time, knowing the x velocity, there's one thing we need, which is the distance in the x direction. I'm going to solve for the distance in the x direction simply by multiplying both sides by time. And you get vx times time. The velocity in the x direction is 20 meters per second times the time of 3 seconds. The seconds will cancel, and you'll be left with 60 meters. And that's the distance the ball goes in the x direction. 
thank you for listening.